released this logo, we had gotten a, like a cease and desist or whatever from Louis Vuitton. Which... My name is Ryan Wheeler, uh, also known as Lambo Dad, and I drive a 2004 Lamborghini Gallardo. I have a Honda Civic that is, I don't remember exactly what year. I think it's a 93. It's an EG hatch. It's gonna be super fast, I hope. We're doing it on a budget, so I have a budget build going on it. Uh, and I plan to actually get that out and race it this year, take it to the track, do that stuff, getting my kids involved with the cars. My daughter, who's almost three, absolutely loves the Lambo. My son loves Fortnite. So we're working on all of that. Kind of what got me involved with the car community was, uh, I've been involved in it for a long time, since back in the early 2000s, back when university was like a real thing, back when uh, propulsion was on university and we were swapping B-series and we were the first, some of the first people to do it and we did it with zero dollars like at all. We're on the lowest budget. Our cars would get impounded uh, all the time because we'd be driving them with no hoods and fenders because we couldn't afford that part yet. So that I, I was involved with the car scene then a ton. Um, and then I got into the Evos. To be honest, I pretty much spent all my money on modding cars and then also um, on tickets for getting pulled over. And I couldn't really drive and afford to pay insurance anymore. So I got out of the car scene. Uh, I was still have had a passion for cars, but I couldn't afford to be in it anymore. Uh, and my dream was always to have a Lamborghini and to get into the exotic side of it. When I actually kind of came to a point in my life where I, could, I couldn't I could really afford it, but I could afford to get into the exotic car scene, um, I got in, I kind of noticed some things that were lacking from what I thought it was gonna be like, what I pictured having an exotic car to be like. And so then I decided to kind of make the change that I wanted to see. And uh, and then that's where kind of the Lambo dad thing took off from. Um, we put a ton of kids in the car. We kind of show, we, I try to, my goal is always to show kids that no matter what they've gone through, where they've been, where they're at, they can make a change and then they can do anything. I think last season we put over 2,000 kids in the driver's seat, got heavily involved with the Crown Rally. We raised a ton of money for, uh, if, for, through Rally for a Cause, for Epilepsy Foundation, for Shriners Hospital, for Cheers for Years. So we do all that and it's been absolutely amazing. Um, the people I've met, the connections I've made, the kids that I have that DM me still that their day was made because they got to sit in my car and they still remember that a year, two years later. So, so with my car, uh, when I bought it, I was told all these horror stories. I started driving it and realized that it wasn't as easy to drive as I thought it was gonna be. It was very clunky because of the all-wheel drive because it's an older car. Uh, so I wasn't gonna touch it, I was just gonna leave it alone and instantly started modifying it. Um, eight days after I bought it, I ordered uh, a rear-wheel drive kit for it. From there, it just kind of progressed and progressed and progressed and then the clutch went out and the front end went out and all these things went out because when these cars just sit and then they start to get driven like, like they, they're supposed to, Things break on them early on because they're used to just sitting. Now it's been bulletproof and we now have, it's got full titanium exhaust by B-Rogue. Um, it's got uh, the best clutch we could put in it. It's been converted to rear wheel drive. It's on um, full coilovers, uh, read performance intakes. Got uh, Ferrata three piece custom wheels, uh, carbon aftermarket wing, carbon rear balance. As far as we know, it's the only Lamborg gated Lamborghini Gardo in the world that has line locks. So it has two full line lock setups. So I have a push button so I can hold the front 
wheels and do burnouts. <laughs> As far as uh, the appearance of the car now, when I bought the car, it was white, and then that got old, and so then with this last wrap, I said, let's go even bigger, and by this time, I kind of formed a brand behind the car and came up with this logo. We decided to print the logo all over, and we used 3M, uh, we worked with 3M, so 3M sponsored the vinyl for the wrap, and we used a 3M printable, full reflective vinyl. So this car at night, when you take a picture of it or anything, it's like this crazy glow. When I got the wrap was finished, when everything was done, I finally put pictures out there. Uh, I reached out to some big car pages. I worked with some of them and it ended up getting like, like some crazy, like 60 million impressions. And I got the most hate in my DM that I almost shut my Instagram off. It was so hard to read through because I had probably a thousand messages that were people literally telling me to kill myself for ruining a perfectly good car. And so I like questioned everything about why I did it. And I was like, you know what? This is like, I love it. It's my car. Uh, and now things have, you know, we've, we've powered through that. It felt like when the car was white, I got a ton of like the, like eye rolls, people flick you off on the highway, the car would get spit on. Now when we've gone to this wrap, I get, I mean, I've made so many friends like at gas stations where people come up and they're like, they genuinely care and they wanna know what's behind it. Why does the car look like it looks? Something has to be behind it. I've got my Instagram tagged all over it. I've got my YouTube all over it. Uh, and now, I mean, actually driving it around, people can talk about all they want online, but when I run into these same people, they're super cool, they recognize it. That's what I was going for. I wanted people to recognize the car. I wanted it to be different. When we released this logo, we had gotten a, like a cease and desist or whatever from Louis Vuitton. It was a little scary because I haven't dealt with anything like that, but it meant that we were seen. Someone got their eyes on us and we had to change the, we had to change the L. We had to change the L angle because I guess that's patented or, or, or trademarked or something. So my, my YouTube has changed just a little bit. It's just Lambo Dad. Uh, my Instagram though is Lambo, L-A-M-B-O underscore dad with two Ds. So D-A-D-D. -D. So people have actually spit on you? But when I had the Maserati, it was the worst. I had a gray Maserati Ghibli SQ4 and it had, uh, had a bunch of carbon and wheels. It, it just it just was a nice looking, but it's a four door yeah. car. Sure. Um, and yeah, dude, that one, that got it the worst. Uh, and then when this was white, this got it, it was pretty, a lot of people flick you off, stuff like that. Sure, they just assume you're a douchebag. Yeah, yep, yeah, instantly, yep. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what I noticed when I got into the exotic car scene. I mean, there is, there's a handful of people that have them that are kind of arrogant. Um, and then there's a lot that you get to know and they're actually super cool, like awesome people. Absolutely. Which is with any of the, you know, car stuff. And that was kind of where the Civic thing came from was so many people would come up to me that like the car shows where there was, you know, where everybody's at, the Volkswagens, the Civics, and. I'd go over and I'd always go talk to Civic guys because I love Civics. And they're like, don't you drive a Lambo here? I'm like, yeah. Yeah. I'm like, you don't have to act like you. We're you. good, man. Like, and I'm like, no, dude, seriously, like, I love these cars. I'm going to build one. Yeah, whatever. I'm like, all right. And then I started getting the guys that were like, they come up and they tell you, uh, or they message me. I'd be like, what a waste of money. And I'm like, what are you even talking about? <laughs> they're like, my buddy's got a, uh, a car that he's got 10 grand into her 15 he's got a fifteen thousand dollar car and he wants to race you i go i don't i mean i took the all-wheel drive out of this thing i'm, I'm not i don't i didn't build i right. didn't buy it to drag race it yeah um and dude they would go like i have people consistently telling me that oh like, dude you want to race amazing, by the way. Sorry. oh yeah that that clunk oh, yeah god and uh, dude, I'd have these people, so I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna build a car for under 10 grand. That's, yep. I'm hoping we get that thing in the nines. So if you guys haven't wa watched Ryan's channel, um, he's building a, a drag car, uh, the, the Honda Civic that we saw. And uh, yeah, I mean, take it away. Yeah, it's gonna be sweet. It's, uh, it's an EG chassis, EG hatch. 
Um, it's got a just a built LS VTEC in it. 6266 turbo. Um, pretty much all the supporting mods. I bought it used, already built, but ripped it all the way down. It wasn't running. Um, you know, we had kind of had, it's kind of a sight unseen. A buddy had it. And I'm like, dude, he messaged me and price was right and it, it fit it fit the build I wanted to do yeah. and it fit the price range. That the price of those are, are crazily going up surprisingly. And yeah, to like, find a clean one, obviously. So to find a clean EK, so if you look back, if they go on my channel and look back, I found my EK that I built in 2003. Sure. My first EK, like nice car that I built. I took a loan out. It actually got impounded when I was uh when I was 16. <laughs> And or no 17. Oh yeah, the red one. Yeah. Right, yeah. So I we found the exact chassis and it's super clean and I made the mistake. And not really a mistake, but I offered him I'm like, dude, whatever. He's like, Well, I just finished it, I don't really want to sell it. Yeah. I'm like, well if everything's good, I'll give you like 15 grand. Like I don't care what it costs, I won. <laughs> and then it wasn't ready to sell yet. Sure. So then it kinda went months and then he couldn't find the title. He got the title, but it was like Okay, well now months have gone by. Well now I already built. I bought a car to build. Yeah, we're so good. I still I still want to buy that car. I don't know if it's if the cameras are picking it up, but the gated transmission sounds phenomenal. I mean, it's that's now I get the hype. I never drove this car until I owned it. Until I bought it. Yeah. So it was when I was leaving to go drive it home after buying it. So even like on the test drives, I was sitting in that seat, and I remember that was like. That's what you remember. Yeah. Click, click, click. And now it's so nor like now I, I drive it all the time. So the engine in the back too. This is my first time ever dri riding in a Lamborghini. That's so it's right. I never ha have ever had that sensation. It's weird. It's so it's crazy. So yeah. Different. Yeah. It literally feels like surround sound. Like you're in the theater. When it's so with the windows up, it's really loud in here because yeah. it's got just full titanium exhaust, no mufflers, this... no resonators. Um, when you're driving with the windows open, dude, it's not. And if you get higher in the RPMs, it's actually quieter because you don't get that loud drone. Oh, sure, sure. And so the power band with this car, where is it? Um, well, what gear is? Uh, is I mean, ideal? it kind of depends on what you're doing. I like first because we're usually doing donuts and stuff yeah, like that. Absolutely. So. Finish warming up here. You hear the backfire? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, the car feels super raw. I love it. Yeah, it is. That's the thing with these is they're not like it's not like a Huracan. Like no. they're not refined. They're yeah. not, especially this one, because it's super loud. Oh, have you dealt with any issues? Yeah. So pretty much all of them. I mean, when you get them, so a lot of people, because right now you can get these very affordable yeah. in the E gear. So an 04 through an 06, uh, pre-LP, e-gear car, uh, burns through clutches sure. uh, big time. Sure. So they fixed it. I mean, it got better each year, um, but obviously these are the sought after is the, is the gated manuals. Of course. Uh, and when you first get them, the driving, like we talked about a little bit before, when you drive them, what I noticed is like we'd get to a car show. First of all, it's blind spots everywhere when you first get one. That's why I got this big mirror. I could oh, see yeah, out. Yeah, yeah the corner mirrors sure. uh, or the corner windows yep. and when you would go to like back into a spot they were so clunky because the all-wheel drive system is not was not good because it was like old and clunky uh, so when we converged rear wheel drive it turned it into a, like a complete driver's car and how rare like are the the gated I mean they're still out there yeah. they're getting up in mileage yeah. uh, and that's why a handful of people were like dude keep your miles off I got it with real low miles yeah now it's at 43,000, so we're gonna keep piling up. So it doesn't have the it doesn't have the boost power. No, but, that, but I mean, that raw power. Man. It's just the uh, and the noise. I mean, oh. and then the pops. So the oh. pops once you get there's something about an all motor. Oh, yeah. And then at night, I mean, it shoots. Oh, I've seen them. Big seen old the flames. flames, yeah. <laughs> that was third? This is third, yep. Oh. It doesn't have like a ton of power. So, yeah, and we went back and forth. We were going to twin turbo or single turbo. We we're yeah. going to do a single big turbo kit. But I rally with it. I mean, we stack miles on. My wife and I will do, you know, 15, 16, 1700 mile weekends in the car. Yeah. So, like, 
turbocharging is not it's a good thing. It, yeah, it's you not. Need to be it's yeah, we want it to be just reliable. Get in, go. Yeah. How many rallies have you been on with this car? Uh, so I think we've done three now, like three big. Yeah. And overall, I mean, knock on wood, it's been pretty reliable. Yeah. I mean, we've had a handful of things go wrong with it, especially when I was first working on it, and everyone's like, "Oh my God, how can you stand always working on it?" It's like, well. It's like any other car except for like the miles we're putting on it. I mean, we put we've been putting in like 10,000 plus miles a season on it. Wow. So that I mean, it's destined awesome. to have issues. But, and you drive the car. Like yeah. that's that's another big thing that I think people should know is like I think we did seven sets of rear tires last year. No last way. Yeah. So so it gets driven and we do I mean, <laughs> these are line locks right here. Oh, yeah, so yeah. this is the switch and then that's the line lock to hold them. And oh, wow. yeah, so it's so, so good. Oh. <laughs> and you can feel them in your feet. Oh yeah, for sure. That's <laughs> yeah, a lot of fun. I love That's it. Awesome. Again, Ryan, I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks um, for this, coming out. You yeah. made you made a little trek out to to hang so h-town h-town is yep. always fun um again check out ryan's channel it's lambo dad you don't have to do the underscore anymore i'll obviously link your information in the description and uh yeah we'll catch you guys on the next video awesome. laters later